partially frozen diaper ether out of the partially frozen diaper ether out of the board measuring cool cold well. See the little frozen patch of bottom. THF prepared previously and two equivalents or about 14.7 grams of lithium analyte. So, so by mixing two equivalents of the lithium salt with one equivalent of monotrichloride trist THF, we uh, prepare a monotris analyte. So you can add those in any order, or you can mix the solids together and add them, or whatever's most comfortable. And, uh, after mixing the three solids, there's no immediate reaction. The uh, solution remains light, or mixture remains light orange in color for roughly two hours, over which time the reaction mixture reaches room temperature. And once it's reached room temperature, it will take on a dark brown color. And we stir the reaction mixture for three hours, additional hours after that point in time. Typically, this stirs for five hours. It can sometimes be a little longer or a little shorter, depending on how how cold the actual ether is when you start. It's more or less frozen. You just need to keep an eye on it for the first couple of hours to have a good idea how long it has to be stirred for in total. Did you add both? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, we just need to put the septum on and... Uh, yeah, this will stir until it changes colors and then for three additional hours. Okay, great. Then we'll resume then for the workout. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, John. Five hours of start stirring. This is how the molybdenum trisanilide prep tends to look. It takes on a brown color. This is stirred for 
about five hours. Not very much. And we're going to filter it through sealite and then dry it, the solution, the filtrate rather. And, uh, shot of the uh, solution. So molytrisanamide uh, was the first molecule that was discovered that both binds to nitrogen and cleaves the NN triple bond. It's a solution soluble molecule and uh, because it reacts with dinitrogen, we need to crystallize it through an atmosphere of argon or in vacuum. However, it should be noted that the reaction with dinitrogen is slow at room temperature, which is why the material could be prepared under an atmosphere of purified nitrogen. Here is a little In the box, we sometimes use these little rings, in place of cork rings, to stand things up. And typically, what we either we do one of two things: we either uh, dry this diethylether solution and then add hexane, re-dissolve the solids, and dry that again to remove trace THF from the uh, starting material. And that helps make sure the lithium chloride isn't solubilized at all. But uh, it's usually more convenient to just add about 150 to 200 mils of hexane in the beginning and uh, just strip the combined uh, solution to dryness. The hexane has a higher boiling point than diethyl ether should come off a little more slowly. So we're going to try this filtrate and I might add about 50 more mils of hexane at some point. Then it's just not, not to overflow the 500 mil flask. Pretty much at capacity here. And uh, once we dry this to a solid, we'll extract that in pentane, filter it through sealite again, and that will typically make sure any unreacted lithium analyte and lithium chloride byproduct are removed from the uh, desired molybdenum trisanilide product. You can see the orange color of the uh, solids we filtered off, which is a uh, consequence of the excess moly trichloride THF that was uh, intentionally used in this synthesis. So, to remove the solvent, will take about 90 minutes typically. Just allow it to strip off. I think that's all we need. We'll resume at that point. Thank you, John. Mixture that has been filtered to remove excess molybdenum trichloride THF, and then we dried this mixture over well, a little more than two hours. And it uh, should have dried down to a, uh, a residue that we can scrape up and we can. We can obtain a, a powder, so that's the uh, crude. Can you see that? Can you see down there? Some on the. Uh, so that's the uh, crude reaction mixture. Is a nice brown red powder, mm -hmm. which is reassuring since that is roughly how we expect the product to look. <laughs> We've taken NMRs at this stage, and the the compound is actually 
pure enough to use at this point. I just figure it's good practice to try to pull it out of solution. But I suppose for a, you know, for at least some purposes, you could stop here and isolate the material. So what we typically do is uh, extract this compound in the pentane and do a pentane. We filter the zeolite just to make sure that all of the moly trichloride, this THF, which sometimes does go through during the first filtration for reasons that are unknown to me. And all of the lithium chloride are gone. And frequently at this stage, uh, the zeolite will sometimes smoke the zeolite pad when it comes out of the glove box, which I've always thought is due to just a little bit of unconsumed lithium amide. So just view it as safer to do a pentane extraction than harvest the material at this point. I add a little diethyrethyl if it doesn't come right off the bottom. I have to stick to a little since we don't have a lot after today's prep. The irony is that the purer the stuff is, the more difficult it will be to extract. <laughs> uh, the most common impurity would be uh, the free amine, which is a fantastic co-solvent for this species. Just scrape off the bottom a little bit. Typically scraping the walls of the flask as I did before. So I can hold it up here. Helps significantly with uh, the extraction because materials on the bottom where we can stir it into solution. See, so that's the stuff we're going to be getting rid of. Whatever it happens to, to be. We've already hooked up the argon line so we can purge um, the crystallization vessel, which is this flask with argon. Okay, so it's looking pretty well. Do one more, and if we can't use too much solvent, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> And this uh, stuff that doesn't go into solution, the, the quantities varies with the preparation. Sometimes there's almost none. Sometimes there's quite a bit. Gonna use the same stir bar and we'll wash it off with some diethyrether and THF if we have to. Something on there.
this, so we're going to rapidly stir this as we concentrate it. We're going to pull off about 100 to 150 mils. Right now we have 200 mils of N-pentane, which is the solvent used for the extraction in there. And uh, probably concentrate it down to about 75 before we get the first crop of monitrous analyte, which is just a powdery precipitate. And in a good reaction like this, where a solid is obtained by stripping down the filtered crude reaction mixture, it's typical the first crop just crashes out. And then we'll set the rest up for crystallization and between 50 to 60 mils of solvent. I guess crystallization is a misnomer because uh, typically powder it out as a uh, fluffy red solid. I've got a uh, sample right here of the uh, isolated material. So you can compare that to the crude that was just shown. There. And uh, it'll probably take between uh, less than 10 minutes to pump this down. So do you want to? Sure, let's pause. Can you hold it up again so we can see those solids? No, we don't have that light on. Can you get that light here? There's a switch right over here. The spotlight, you want to turn the light. You want to back there for the back? Do you get them there? Eh, it's not so easy. Okay, yeah, I think, I think you can see some orange solids in there. Oh, just give it another minute or two while we set this up. So we've concentrated this a fair amount. And what we're going to do is filter it just to uh, collect what we can now for the uh, the camera and then we will set the rest up to crystallize overnight and uh, at any point during this prep I could even stop it now and just set this up for crystallization or powder out the substance at low temperature but uh, it's really uh, it's really immaterial whether it powders out at low temperature or is collected just by virtue of concentration of the pentane filtrate. And I'll point out that typically this material powders out in between 45 minutes and three hours in the freezer or so. If it didn't take about a day to make, it would be well worthwhile to do that. And there is the first crop coming out. I don't know if we're allowed to call it the first crop since we didn't really do much to, to get it. Maybe we should call it the zeroth crop, much like the uh, laws of thermodynamics. Try to get a camera shot of the filtration. So there, there, there's monitrous analyte, and it's it looks pretty good, even though it's still still a little bit wet. Um, we do as well just hook the bottom up to a uh, vacuum and uh, the natural rubber stopper here. We will on this. Uh, my guess is this is probably five to six grams. Find out. And uh, the filtrate is still good and still has plenty of good compound in it. So I'm going to transfer it to this flask. I um, don't feel comfortable purging with argon if the flask is almost full because the argon will purge the solvent out as well. Concentrate it for just a minute. And then what we'll do. This is a faster protocol. We get the septum on first. So 
this is a oversized septum. It's uh, slightly larger than a 2440. Thesis, I think I'd give the inner diameter millimeters, but it just fits a little better over these flasks. It's important in any glove box to uh, have electrical tape, but there's no reason that electrical tape has to be black and standard in color. sold in all colors of the rainbow and therefore can be present in the box in all of those colors. It's a blue tape here from Scotch. I believe the only advantage to the black tape is that it's UV resistant as far as I could tell. Concentrate in a little bit. Try not to bump it. I'm just agitating it so it's less likely to, to bump. Don't have any yellow tape today. Okay, so that's probably concentrated enough. So I've already hooked up this argon hose. This argon hose goes to a adapter that's in the back of the box. So we have two uh, ports in the back of the box. One that's used for vacuum right here, and behind it one used for argon. And we just run the argon off of a standard argon tank into the box and uh, because we're going to be purging the solvent with argon I've turned the box blower off I tipped on close well, the catalyst one could but so the argon is typically close to 15 psi and you can see it purging the, the solution right there uh, just move it around, usually 15 seconds or so is enough. What I'm going to do is, uh, this is the key step, if you remove the uh, needle slowly, uh, there's a good chance that the argon will force some solvent out the uh, vacuum adapter onto your face plate. So, so you can usually pull off pretty quick. And then we want to get it out of there cap this so nitrogen is not allowed to enter the flask. Take some more blue electrical tape and uh, this is an important step. This is the uh, the seal is virtually only made by the electrical tape. So it just has to be tightly wrapped and actually these colored tapes are pretty good because they're they're a little bit stretchy and you're amenable to tight wrapping. And this, these seals seem sort of crude, but they'll, they'll hold for about two or three days, I find. And uh, actually, once I left for Christmas vacation and I uh, came back and everything was good, in that case, I had actually greased um, the glass right between the rubber and the glass with a little M grease and that, that enhances the seal but requires a little more dexterity since then this rubber becomes slippery. I'm just going to pierce the top briefly to put it under a positive atmosphere of argon and uh, you want to make sure of course that the red rubber stopper doesn't pop out at some point since it is a positive pressure. And you would also ideally like to seal that needle hole, so I'm taping over the needle hole to accomplish both of these tasks. And I think it, 
it's a good idea to put under a positive pressure because we're going to cool the flask and typically the volume of gas is, is reduced upon cooling, especially when we cool it 55 degrees. So that's the solution as we'll enter the freezer. Uh, there's already some solids in there and we expect to get a powder out. And if if we don't get a good yield, we'll just set it up for a second crop or a third. Leave it in the back of the freezer on the top shelf, and uh, that shelf is reserved for oversized objects, as you can tell. And uh, I guess the last thing to do is to get our yield of, uh, from the first crop. This is the best kind of spatula, we should have a few more in here. I'm going to turn off the argon. It tends to leak a little bit at this joint. the material and uh, see that it's a little lighter underneath so that's a nice bright orange red powder this red orange is how I typically describe it material, um, one can grow beautiful black crystals of it. It's just uh, this material tends to rival it in purity, so uh, I'd say that crystallizing it, unless uh, you need crystals for a specific application, it's just going to lead to a lower yield. And crystals are best grown out of either N hexane or diethyrether, preferably diethyrether, maybe a mixture of the solvents, and pentane seems to be especially prone to just affording a, a powder. Then again, powders are easier to weigh out for future steps. And this one grinds up the crystals, in which case, why grow them? So you get up the nest. Here. You can see that it's really not static at all, it's easy to manipulate. The humidity is of course rather low on a glove box. it is. Well, that's 5.75 grams. I can pump on it a little bit longer, but it's likely to, uh, the mass is not likely to change, so maybe we'll just, just cap it off. Cap it off and uh, synthesis well done. That's molybdenum trisanilide right there. And, and we should, uh, of course, label the vial. And this material is uh, best stored uh, in the glove box freezer, where it uh, retains its integrity for no less than a year. Wonderful.
And this freezer is minus 37.5 degrees Celsius when it agrees with the setting. Well, thanks very much, John. That's a wrap. Okay. That's a wrap.